Today we travel to Donny Land Studios in Sydney South to meet the man himself, Donny Benet. We'll be talking music, great Japanese synth stores, he will not only run through his synth collection, but will record an improvised track from scratch and give us a sneak peek at his next album. That's all in this episode of ADSR. Hi, uh, this is Donny Benet. Welcome to uh, the famous Donny Land Studios. It's uh, my dad's world renowned hit making factory. And um, fortunately, he's out at the moment. And so uh, we've got the full rain here today. So I'll take you through it. A lot of the synth layer parts will come on. Like, I like using um, this guy a lot. That's a nice little thing to put some yeah. colours in. Okay. So I'll try and make it a bit more to my liking. The first songs uh, in the album, are, they're, they're written and they improvise, but they're still written, obviously. Yeah. Uh, a lot of all the synth parts were all improvised, and, and mm. I mean, you know, you go back and you listen to them and you re record them again or you fix up here, but that's the really exciting process for me. Recording process is all, that's the easiest part and the most yeah. fun part um, because you kind of can, this the, the creative period where you it's exciting it's you know you don't know what you're aiming you know what you're aiming for but not yeah. exactly about this is the um, is the arpeggiator that's my favorite thing I love working in in layers doing parts individually uh, there is the uh, the Donny book which is where all the hits end up and uh, so it's full of, full of uh, music, lyrics. So I might do a bass part and see what happens. Thank you. 
So that's kind of an ID. It's always hard pressing and running back to a keyboard. I can't get the access. Every day. <laughs> Suburb, which is the uh, oh, yeah, 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 district. yeah, 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 Growing up, obviously, YouTube wasn't around, and that's just, I mean, I can spend three hours on that without knowing, just checking out, I'll type in 80s R&B, and that's one thing I try and tell younger people, is like, just use that resource well, like, there's a lot, there's so much research you can do on great music, and it's just in front of you. I'll do one more because I love having stereo and guitar. There's never enough time to do stuff. Like I'm always out. True. I'm always in in the studio. Just I, th I think I've got quite a restless musical mind, so I've always wanted to get ideas down. So. I was only reminded by this the other day, I completely forgot about it, and it's just such a shame. There's probably 70 songs that I've totally lost. Um, oh. It was when uh, a program called Encore, I think, came out, and it was basically pre Sibelius, pre Finale. Yeah. And um, you could. Is that would be a composition? Yeah, program? so it was, it was being in high school, and it was, it was a composition program, but you could play everything in. So yeah. basically, and it was all the MIDI sounds, and they were. Awful yeah. sounds, but in a really good way. And I remember there was two computers. Depending on the sound card you had, one had really naff sounds, yeah. and one had kind of really ninety sounds. So yeah. between the two computers, I probably re recorded seventy songs, and they're all gone. I I, I saved them on floppy disk somewhere, but um, there's they're probably gone. yeah, which is a real shame. But I guess behind that, I in high school, I was just so excited to. To be able to record music and and and, um, in, and hear it back immediately, so that was a really good thing, I guess. Uh, I encourage a lot of young musicians just to compose as much as you can, mm. uh, because it's <clears throat> the more you do it, the better you get at it, obviously. And yeah. for every ten songs, one might be good, so you've got to be prepared yeah. to put the hard yards in and the time in to yeah. to uncover that gem. Yeah. So check this out; it's pretty rad. The next batch will be, I, I, they're not better, but they're, they're different. And, and then after that, the third batch will be different. And yeah. That's kind of the exciting thing. Um, when you become, if you listen to someone, a musician you're really interested in, you listen to their full collection of works, there's definite changes between each album, which is exciting, and that's what you should always strive for, I guess. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with this so far.
Thanks, mate. Like, I've, I'm already keen to get the other stuff out soon as well. Yeah. It's, it's just, uh, with any with any kind of music, you've got to, I mean, you kind of, uh, you've got to get it out to get the other stuff out, and mm. it's just that whole process. Um, I, I, I'm comfortable with the idea of getting getting stuff out quickly because um, it just gets the ball rolling for other yeah. things. Because if you don't, if you become too precious, uh, you'll never you never put anything out. Because mm. if you give yourself, um, if you go, oh, I'll, I'll wait and I'll do these songs, and then you get to those songs, you go, oh no, I can do better than that. I mean, you can always do better, and that's the whole idea of getting a body of, of, of work out. So that's a sneak peek. Thanks, that's great. I'm pretty happy with that one. Yeah, there's all. I mean, it's only it's only early days um, in Australia for for what I'm doing. So it's yeah. at the moment just getting a, uh, concentrating on getting the live show to be really good and uh, just yeah, doing as many gigs as possible. Yeah.